Welcome back to another video with Grants Heating and Air. First of all, I want to say thank you for joining us. And if you can like and subscribe, it really helps our channel and our small family owned business grow. So let's get right to it. So we have filmed another dual fuel video, but this one was a little different. So we wanted to show this one as well. On this one, we actually added our handy dandy five inch filter rack that we love to do down here. So let's just show this in case anybody hasn't seen this easy filter change. Got your handle here, pull that guy out, pull it out slide a new one in it's got a little nice foam here to keep things sealed and the four prongs that fit inside if you will make sure all corners are tight there you go easy filter change this one we also did the riser box so we're lifting our furnace up about six and a half seven inches here that allows us to take the plate out of the bottom of the furnace and pull air from the bottom and the side so there's a cutout here i'm sorry my knees in the way a cut out here and a cut out here so we're pulling air from the bottom and the side that lowers the static pressure lowers the amp draw of the system gives us better airflow oh, cooper missed that one <laughs> we're gonna get that one we also increase the width of the return drop so we'll show a photo here of the old installation And by doing this, we also increased the airflow, gave us more space to fit the fan humidifier. Now, I do want to say that these ideally should be installed on the supply. But in this installation, with the riser box, the furnace, and our Daikin Fit heat pump, we didn't have room to install this on the supply. But the customer is still getting 35% of their humidity. I noticed here that they have a vinyl tube that's coming into this, but this has a pinch point. So I'm actually going to send my service tech back out. We're gonna bring this PVC up and in because that pinch point, the material on the pad for the humidifier can actually build up here and cause a blockage. So I did notice we need to change that. We're gonna do that. This also has our air proving switch because we have the Daikin One thermostat that is communicating to our Daikin Fit heat pump. We cannot communicate with this unit and we don't have control with the outdoor temperature to automate things. We did the air proving switch to make sure there's air movement through the system. So if there's a humidity call, this will run as long as there's airflow in the system. So we did a transition piece here for the supply to move the furnace over to make space for the filter rack down below. So with the old furnace, it was a Lennox, and I'll have to look up the model number. I don't remember what the efficiency was, but we were able to take the old furnace out, put in the dual fuel system, and we can actually allow this heat pump to heat the home, and we have it set up at a 25 degree outdoor differential changeover, our thermal balance point. So the system we're talking about today is the Daikin Fit heat pump. The system is a dual fuel system that can operate the heat pump as the primary source of heat. Then the gas furnace is the secondary source of heat. This system set up to switch over at 25 degrees outdoor temperature. So anything above 25, the heat pump will heat the home and anything below 25 degrees, the gas furnace will heat the home. This is all communicating equipment, works with the Daikin One thermostat. We initially had this set up to work with the outdoor temperature sensor. The customer likes the humidity levels higher and is willing to risk a little bit of moisture on the window. So we wanna show you inside this controller how we can actually adjust that. If we hold down this light auto, now all this does is turn the light on. And then if you hold these two, the up and the light button down, It'll get you into this menu. What we're looking for here, and of course in the manual explains all this, but on the number four setting for number two, it will turn off the automatic setting. And I'll show you, if I turn this to one and I go next, this is the maximum humidity allowed when in automatic mode, but we can change that. But let me show you if you click done. This number seven now is a scale through one through 10 that automates the target for humidity. Now it won't show what the target is. So the customer has to kind of find that sweet spot and then they can figure out where they like to set it. But in this case, we want to actually turn this off and this will allow just manual control of the humidifier. So we'll go to setting number four, turn on number two. And now you see we have 
a set point here where we can bring it up. I've locked it out at 40% per the customer's request. So we're gonna leave it at 35%. I think me playing around with it has really made the humidity jump there. We'll let that kind of calibrate out, but we wanted to show you that. There's also just off and auto, and the light is always on auto. We just don't wanna leave the light on all the time. But you do have the option to allow it to be automatic or manual. Something I would like to talk about is why do we choose Daikin? I am also a Lennox dealer. I've been a carrier dealer. And I'll tell you that Lennox has gone through some hard times and really hasn't helped the small businesses. They really chose to work with large corporation businesses and really limited us as a small company to what we could purchase. And then we were introduced to Daikin. And Daikin is the largest HVAC supplier in the world. They actually invented the first multi-zone mini split in 1986. So they're way ahead of the game in what's going on with this technology. In my opinion, Carrier, Lennox, and the rest are chasing Daikin's technology. This is an EEV or an, or an electronic expansion valve. There is a control board in here that is communicating to the control board in the furnace and to the thermostat. This allows the system to operate in many different states. Stages. We really like Daikin because they have that ability to hook in a inverter side discharge type of outdoor unit which we'll show here soon and kind of take the mini split technology and bring it into the unitary technology which is the standard split systems that most people are used to in a residential application. We really also like Daikin because they have a 12 year part warranty. All the other manufacturers are 10. They stand behind their product. When I call tech support or any of my technicians call tech support, the longest I think we've been on the phone is maybe 45 minutes. And they have a division set aside for their, their mini splits, their VRVs, their unitary systems and everything. So you speak with somebody who knows that. And I've always been impressed with their tech support. They've been very helpful. So that's, that's nice. We also get great support from Stevens Equipment. That is our local supplier here. And they will bring us up parts if we need it. I mean, they're just the greatest supply house that we've dealt with and I've dealt with a lot. So I really shout out to Stevens. Okay, so you know in these videos, I either have a calyx sticking out or my hair sticking out. That just is what it is. So you guys can point and laugh all you want. And uh, I guess we're having a good time with it right now. So anyway, I have to tell you, reliability with Daikin has been very high. We have had very little callbacks on the equipment side of anything that's outside of our control during commissioning. We've had two furnaces in four years that we've had issues with that we've gone back several times. This was the DM 92 SN models. I reached out to Stevens Equipment, expressed that we were having issues with the furnace. They sent me a brand new furnace, upgraded model, no cost. Of course, I had to pay my installers to do it, but to have that kind of support from Stevens Equipment and Daikin has been phenomenal. And now our customers are super happy because they were having issues. And of course, that is very frustrating. And when your contractor comes back and says, look, we're just going to go ahead and change it out, give you a brand new furnace, no charge. That's what we do. We stand behind the product. We stand behind our warranties and we've done two in four years, that's it. Everything else on all our installations has been flawless. We've had zero issues. So we do use a combustion analyzer and we use a very expensive one. They're over a thousand dollars and we do commission each furnace, making sure that at our altitude, there's a little bit of a port here we, we, we drill in there and we're gonna make sure that every single furnace that we install is commissioned properly for the altitude that it's at. As a matter of fact, most of the furnaces, we change the pressure switch for higher altitude and also do the combustion analysis, adjust gas pressure as needed. Now this application, we are an LP gas, that's propane gas, and that is why our dual fuels are very popular because the propane is expensive in our area, and so it makes a lot of sense to use the dual fuel heat pump to offset some of that propane cost. We also did two new water heaters. We've piped these water heaters to have equal distance on the pipes so that when the cold water comes in, we have equal resistance of the hot coming out, which shares the load between the two water heaters. Now, I can tell you what I would have done a little bit differently, just to be straight up and honest. I would have put isolation valves on all 
four lines. Now, why, why would we do that? Because if one of these water heaters was to ever fail or leak, we could isolate and still have the other one work. I know we've changed that, we do that going forward, but we still did this right. Some people pipe these to go into one unit and then the hot goes into the cold of the other unit and then comes out hot to the main supply well what that does is puts all the load on the first water heater even if you're changing the thermostats it's really not right you really want to share the load between the two units the lifespan will be almost the same this was a nice application where we put floor drain pans we put the the pans under the water heaters and we've shared that back to the floor drain there. But up here in our location, our power is nine cents a kilowatt. So it makes sense to use electric water heaters and not propane water heaters. You know, I, I teach my guys on every job, what would you do better? What would you change on the next job? So we're not perfect. We're always gonna have something we could have done a little bit better. And that's why I'm being honest here. I, I would have put ball valves on each of those lines to be able to isolate a unit if need be. This furnace was installed on 622 of 22. So this is a couple years old now, just so you guys know. And we're always trying to do things better. We're always learning from our installations. This is a great installation. The only two things I noticed I would change on this installation was what I talked about with the water heaters and the vinyl tube here can fill full of what's on the humidifier pad and start to plug up right here at a pinch point. So what we do going forward, and I am sending my tech back out to address this, is just to bring that PVC up and directly in so there's no vinyl. We don't do the vinyl anymore, and you might see that on some of our other installations that we've done recently. Say hi, Ayla. Hello. Hello. Now I'm filming. I'm letting her do the... So I installed this furnace back in 2022. <laughs> <laughs> this thing's hot. Yeah, those are hot. A little behind the scenes, we're, we set up a light to help you guys see what we're looking at here. Okay, so we're outside looking at the Dyke and Fit heat pump. This one, we had a little bit of a grading challenge. We put this one on a pad and some fix of foots here to mount it. But this fit really nice in this corner right here. This is what I'm talking about with the slim design of the Dyke and Fit unit and being able to fit an inverter compressor that has kind of that mini split technology, use it in a unitary type of application and look at it fit right here and we'll get another view, but it didn't take any of their walkway up coming through here. Fits right nice in here. And they actually painted this line set on this one, which most customers don't do that, but that, that came out real slick. See how you can still walk through here and this unit is fitting very nicely in this little area here. It's traditional heat pumps that most people see are the big box units that would have to be at least out to here. So love that we can fit these in real nice like this. Now this is a dual fuel, so we did not put this up on a big mini split stand for the defrosting cycle on this unit. But as you can see, it's winter out here. There's lots of snow. It's absolutely beautiful out here. Um, but this unit has no ice underneath it. So when we're doing the dual fuel applications with the switch over at around 25 degrees, we don't need to lift it way up and put the pan heaters in and so forth. So I know we have a lot of sun, and a lot of bright snow right here. I'm leaving my glasses off. This is a beautiful area and I just want to kind of share some of the areas that we work in. It's just epic where we get to work, the beautiful mountains, the snow. Just wanted to kind of show that. So thanks for watching another video with us and we hope to see you on the next one. Like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for coming along. We'll see you on the next one.